Welcome to The Note, I'm Mika. Bluehole and Microsoft made a splash at E3 when they announced that the super popular player unknowns Battlegrounds would be making its exclusive console debut on Xbox One. And this week, they finally confirmed when Xbox One users will be able to play it on the system because PUBG launches on Xbox on December 12th. Like its PC counterpart, PUBG will enter early access via Xbox's game preview program and will cost players just $30. As for the PC version's final 1.0 release, that one's still unconfirmed, but Bluehole said at Paris Games Week that it's on target to drop in late December. It should go without saying that just about every company in the world hopes that just about every person in the world will buy their product, but for the most part, they set their sights on, you know, more realistic goals. However, that's not necessarily the case with Nintendo, who appears to be riding high on their recent success and, based on new comments, plans on changing their marketing tactics. Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima told investors that the company is no longer going to focus on the Switch as a per-household item, but rather a per-individual item. That's definitely going to set it apart from other consoles and puts it in more of the mobile phone or handheld category. That would give it a significantly higher upside than other consoles, which are marketed as household products. Recently, industry analysts up Switch projections based on it selling like a handheld rather than a console, and even Nintendo's own data suggests that handheld is the preferred mode of the console over docked. So get ready, because Nintendo wants literally every single person to have a Switch. Now, if only they could make that many. A nice new trend in some open world games is to give you all the tools to explore it and have fun right from the get-go. And from the sound of it, Insomniac may be going in that direction with their upcoming PS4 Spider-Man game. Creative director Brian Intihar told IGN that since Spider-Man has been fighting crime for eight years at the start of the game, the game itself needs to reflect that. Intihar said it's not like you load up the game and he doesn't have any powers. The first time you're swinging, the first time you're fighting, you need to feel like Spider-Man. It's not about doing something cool, stripping your powers, and starting again. You play Spider-Man to be Spider-Man, and we want you to feel like that right away. As for how those powers translate to the open world, well, they're not talking about that too much yet. But come on, guys, show us more of that web sling, and it's so cool. One of Sony's biggest launches this fall season is the new Frozen Wilds expansion for Horizon Zero Dawn. If you're wondering just how much bang for your buck the $20 DLC offers, we've got a few new details. Several outlets got hands-on time with the new expansion, reporting that it'll offer about 15 hours of new gameplay, which isn't shabby. Fortunately, for those of you who didn't complete the game all the way through, the new Northern Territory isn't just offering endgame activities. Guerrilla Games says that it's focused on mid to high level fun, so that even if you're still progressing through the main story, you can hop on over for a quick jaunt and still have plenty of stuff to do. On top of that, a new Traveler skill tree is also added, which focuses on improving your mount abilities, like a dismount strike that allows you to leap off your mounted attack while on the move. The Frozen Wilds launches on November 7th. Gamers who have been riding that Konami hate train pretty hard over the last couple of years might be a little bit curious about the company's most recent financial report because Apparently, they're doing just fine. Konami told investors in their latest earnings statement that they have high hopes for the gaming industry. That enthusiasm comes from a sharp uptick in both the money that they're making and the money that they're keeping, with revenue up 13.8% and profit a whopping 46%. Most of that growth is thanks to digital games like Pro Evolution Soccer and, well, you guessed it, Pachinko. So if you're hoping Konami is going to have a sudden change of heart about their new direction, you're gonna have to probably keep waiting. Is the new Assassin's Creed game getting review bombed? Well, Kotaku reports that a bunch of fake user reviews have been showing up on the Metacritic page for Assassin's Creed Origins. All of them are positive and they read like someone got drunk and smashed random keys on their keyboard. One 10 out of 10 review says the game brings a taste of Tomb Raider mixed in with the girth of a Horizon Zero Dawn and wrapped in a traditional Assassin's Creed structure. Another says the RPG style approach gives the player more opportunity and way more depthness than the previous AC. Gotta love when a game brings the depthness. That's probably my new favorite word. Metacritic boss Mark Doyle told Kotaku that they're aware of the fake reviews which have happened before and their mods are dutifully suspending accounts. Production of the last season of House of Cards has been suspended as the fallout continues over sexual assault allegations against its star Kevin Spacey. Previously, Netflix has said it would cancel the series after the upcoming sixth season, which reportedly was going to be its last one anyway. But now, Netflix says it has suspended the production indefinitely on the season. 
This all stems from allegations made by Star Trek Discovery star Anthony Rapp, who said that Spacey made sexual advances when Rapp was 14 years old. In a statement, Netflix and production company Media Rights Capital said they have decided to suspend production on House of Cards Season 6 until further notice to give us time to review the current situation and to address any concerns of our cast and crew. Season 6 was expected to be 13 episodes long and released sometime next year, but now, obviously, we do not have a new timeline. So just how much of the Han Solo movie did director Ron Howard reshoot? Well, judging by a new report, practically the whole thing. You might remember that Howard took over as director in June after director Chris Lord and Phil Miller were pushed out over differences regarding the movie's direction. At that time, the movie was apparently only a few weeks away from wrapping up principal photography, but according to the Resistance Broadcast, a podcast associated with Star Wars News Net, up to 80% of the movie was reshot by Howard and the movie's budget was increased by a lot. And at least one role has been recast with Michael K. Williams being replaced by Paul Bettany. The movie called Solo is set to release in theaters on May 25th of next year, so we'll see what ends up in the final copy. No less than Superman himself has acknowledged the obvious, that DC movies have had a bumpy ride. In an interview with The Rake magazine, Henry Cavill said that there was a style that the filmmakers were going for, an attempt to be different and look at things from a slightly different perspective, which hasn't necessarily worked. And despite the comparisons to Marvel Cinematic Universe, Cavill said, even if Marvel didn't exist, we'd struggle. But he said a big exception to that was Wonder Woman, which has been the unquestioned breakout hit for DC and Warner Brothers. Cavill said, I think it's a wonderful time for the female hero. It is the perfect setting in social politics right now. We need it, we want that perspective, and Wonder Woman has struck the ideal time and become a phenomenal success, which is fantastic. Now he feels like things are more on track as far as DC film goes, and we can start telling the stories in the way that they need to be told. DC's next movie is Justice League, which hits theaters on November 17th. It looks like Twitch won a big old chicken dinner over rival YouTube when it comes to streaming games. According to a report from Streamlabs, the number of concurrent streamers on Twitch grew by 67% in the third quarter of this year, which analysts say is partly due to new initiatives that let smaller streamers generate revenue on their channels. Twitch had 25,000 concurrent streamers for the quarter, compared to just 8,200 on YouTube Gaming Live. Still though, YouTube Gaming grew more quickly than Twitch in the quarter, with a 56% increase in monthly active streamers, compared to Twitch's 16% growth. One thing's for sure though, gaming videos are huge, with over 600 million viewers this year, and that number continues to grow. Well, that is all the news we have for you today. Remember to comment on any of your favorite news stories below. And for more news from every corner of the internet, remember to like this video. And if you're new right here, subscribe to the know. Nintendo president Tatsumi Kimishima told it, told it did. Creative director Brian In Inthar? Intihar? Intihar. Intihar. One of Sony's biggest launches this fall was its... The $20 DLC offers... Wait, oh, bye bye. If you're wondering just how much bang for your buck the $20...